この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますSo I guess all you'll hear are the sounds.、Um, you know what? I reckon that if you just stare at the screen and just try to picture the sort of footage you might see with these sounds, I'm sure something will happen. Yeah, just do that. Now, concentrate. Concentrate. Super Mario Maker! <laughs> And welcome back. What you just imagined you saw was the reveal trailer for a Mystery Mushroom costume from the game Super Mario Maker on the Wii U. Now, those of you who were following Nintendo games back in that era might remember seeing that trailer before, and you probably had the exact same thought just now as you did back then. Who is that? Who is this random anime girl? I mean, Mario Maker had some weird costumes in its post release support, like Baby Metal and Chitoge Kurosaki from Nisekoi. But at least those were somewhat recognisable. This costume, no one knew who it was. Even your trusted professor of all things Nintendo had to do a deep dive Google search to get even a basic understanding of who this character was. And my whole thing is knowing about obscure Nintendo games and characters. It really made me feel like I had so much more to learn about this world. <laughs> But who is this girl then? Who is this character? Well, let me introduce you to voice actress, singer, and radio host, Yu Ayasaki, a pivotal character of focus for the topic of today's broadcast, because I am going to be explaining to you all who she is and what the deal is with her show, All Night Supon, the Japan only ARG radio show officially run by Nintendo. Let's go! I. I don't know. Okay, so what is BB Radio 9129 All Night Supon? Well, the name is a pun.、Uh, supon is actually a type of soup made from Asian soft shell turtles that is considered an expensive delicacy in China and Japan, hence why the broadcast mascot is a turtle named Garol. Which is actually a little morbid, I'm not gonna lie. It's almost like when you see a chicken takeout and the mascot is a chicken, but at least the show doesn't promote eating turtles. Anyway, This show is a parody of the famous Japanese radio station All Night Nippon, which has been ongoing since October 1st, 1967. Nintendo and All Night Nippon have seemingly had a good relationship over the years. In fact, Nintendo even made a game for them on the Famicom Disk System, 
a modified version of the original Super Mario Bros. game, but with many of the graphics changed to resemble entertainers associated with the show, whether they were idols, DJs, artists, or the radio's hosts. It's through this relationship that Nintendo contracted Nippon Broadcasting System, the Tokyo radio station that hosted the show, to also host All Night Suppon, and broadcast it over the internet to the Nintendo 3DS, where it could be played through the Japan exclusive Daigasso Bando Brothers P, often shortened to simply Bambra P. Bambra P is the third and latest title in the Band Brothers line of music making games from Nintendo. Over in the West, we only got one entry, and that was on the Nintendo DS called Jam with the Band, although it was only released in Europe. I'll probably do a broadcast all about this series one day as its development is pretty fascinating, starting out as a Game Boy Color title called Game Boy Music, but for now we just need to focus on Bambra P, which was developed by Intelligent Systems instead of Nintendo SPD and R&D 2, as this was when Yu Ayasaki and All Night Suppon made their debut. Bambra P has a lot of very interesting features, but the one we are interested in is the radio station. Just like a real radio, it was always broadcasting, playing music from a variety of different genres like J-pop, rock and classical music. If the player heard a song they liked, then they could just download it, for a fee, because this game actually had microtransactions, which kinda sucks, but that's for another time. The radio stations also hosted their own original broadcasts, with a couple of different hosts like DJ Hot and the game's central character Barbara the Bat. The main one of these, however, was of course Yu Ayasaki, who we will get into in a minute, because first I should probably explain the ARG factor in all of this. For those who don't know, the term ARG stands for Alternate Reality Game, and despite the name, it doesn't have to be related to a video game. It can be a series of YouTube videos, a creepypasta, some kind of viral marketing campaign, or in this case, a radio show. The point of the ARG is that it presents an alternate reality as real, and the listener plays a part in following that story and participating in what is essentially one big game. That's what All Night Suppon did with its players. It presented itself as a radio station that players could listen into and then participate in events put on by the show. The special radio broadcast for All Night Suppon only happened at specific hours of the day and specific days of the week. It ran in seasons, and although the episodes were pre-recorded, it tried to present itself as if it was live. It also hosted several competitions, both music-focused and otherwise. A big part of what made Bambra P appealing was that it was a music creation tool using Yamaha Vocaloid technology, the same technology that birthed Tatsuni Miku back in 2007. So players could turn themselves into a Vocaloid and make songs through the game which could then be submitted to Nintendo and released online to enjoy. This includes both original tracks and fan tracks of pre-existing songs. For example... These songs are all still available on YouTube on the official 9129 Suppon channel, and if you use the Wayback Machine, you can still access the All Night Suppon website, which has rankings for all these songs, including stats like how many downloads each song has. It's neat. All Night Suppon also has its own Twitter account, separate from the one used to advertise the game, 
and has a blog with further ARG goodness. The blog ran from September 2014 to July 2017 and has all kinds of fun stuff on it like Twin Hades Infinite Memory Labyrinth, an RPG that doesn't actually exist, but they still held a contest for it where fans could enter and become the game's character designer, logo designer and lead musician. The only prize you received for doing this was a free CD, but it's still a pretty cool idea. The entire OST for this game is on YouTube and it's not bad in my opinion. The radio station also collaborated with various artists and had new songs debut on the blog, which is something I'll touch upon a bit later in the broadcast, its relationship with other artists. So it was becoming a real place for the music community to get news. It also held music contests, this shouldn't really be a surprise, but they often got special judges on these contests to come in and even compose some songs on the app like Zun, the creator of Toho Project. They did an entire Toho Project themed event where fans had to create remixes of Toho songs like Bad Apple and UN Owen Was Her. In fact, I think a lot of popular songs in this game were Toho covers, or at least Toho inspired. It even sold CDs under the label GB Music, like this Toho CD, as well as its own branded merchandise. It even offered its services out to schools and businesses to make background music that they could use for whatever they wanted. It's wild, it's practically a full on business that you could hire outside of the game, yet exists for the game. But yeah, this is what All Night Supon was, a radio show that invited its fans to get creative and participate in its world. As it interacted with the real life entertainment industry and established itself as a real radio show, even though you could only listen to it via your Nintendo 3DS, and it was meant to be a part of the fictional Bamprapi universe. Maybe you could also listen to these shows via the blog? It's a bit hard to tell, uh, for reasons that I'll get into very shortly. But this isn't where the ARG stops, no no no, this is all just a side quest for the real game. And that game's protagonist is... Yu Ayasaki, or Ayasaki Yu due to how the surname comes first in Japan, you know I'll probably just say that from now on because that's actually how Nintendo always says it, is the host of All Night Suppon and the central character of the multi year long story that happened both within and outside of Bamprapi itself. Ayasaki Yu not only hosted the radio show, but she also has her own social media account, released singles, and has done voice acting for both Nintendo games and even other radio shows. Specifically, Angela's Sparkin' Talking Show and All Nights Upon Music 10. Ayasaki Yu wasn't the only radio host for Bamper P, but she certainly became the biggest star, potentially on the same level as her boss and senpai, Barbara. And I think the best way to understand Ayasaki Yu and her story is to actually break down an episode of All Night Suppon. Most of these were locked to the game itself, but thankfully, to celebrate Ayasaki Yu receiving 500 followers on Twitter, All Night Suppon released a digest version of the show on YouTube. It's only at 240p because that's the resolution of the 3DS. She can't have fancy 1080p resolutions like I get, poor Ayasaki. The digest version is mainly made up of clips taken from the first season of the show, and none of the segments where Ayasaki would interview real life musicians and celebrities, which was arguably the main focus. So let's break down this digest, shall we? A special thank you to my good friend Cody Nokolo, lead translator at Source Gaming and founder of the indie studio Noko Godo, for sitting down with me and helping me translate the entire show. I swear it wasn't at gunpoint, or at least you can't prove it was. So, the show begins, and each section is broken up by Barbara Robo number 6, a cat robot version of Barbara the Bat. Hey, that studio looks sort of familiar. Anyway, they just exist to explain the premise of this episode, and we can ignore her for now. The true beginning is the introduction of Ayasaki Yu herself, which she does in a very nervous but excited way. This is her first gig after all, as Ayasaki got the job by winning the All Night Suppon Rookie Voice Acting Grand Prix. You see, Ayasaki's dream is to be a voice actor, 
something that she was inspired by from all the anime she watched as a child, and she trained herself by getting good at tongue twisters, which coincidentally turned out to be a pivotal part of the competition and lead to her victory. Not falling over her words is, supposedly, Ayazaki's talent, and being able to talk really quickly. This show will constantly test this talent of hers by throwing tongue twisters her way, and in the first example we get, she is given a list of salad names, and she must say them in quick succession. She's really nervous about doing this live on the show, but she manages to succeed. Good for you, Ayasaki. But can you make it last? Apparently not. The second tongue twister she's forced to do, taken from Broadcast 4, causes her to completely stumble. She claims it's very hard to do, and she tried her best, but did she really? Huh, what's that? Y you want me to attempt it as well? Um, well, okay, I, I guess I can try. What did she say? Tate kake kake takata ta take? I think that translates to something like, a leaning tap on the shoulder is like leaning against a wall, something like that? Well, alright, when in Rome, let's give it a go. Count me down, Sosuke. Tate kake kake ta ka ta 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 ke ta ta ka ke ka ta 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 Okay, okay, you know what, actually that is quite tough. Uh, you have my sympathy, Ayasaki, especially in Broadcast 2, where they made you do a user-submitted tongue twister, that was a play on Barbara's name, Aka Barbara Al Barbara Ki Barbara, which in English is Red Barbara, Blue Barbara, Yellow Barbara. This one is extra stressful for her, as she's worried about her great senpai being offended if she messes it up. She messes it up. So okay, Ayazaki's main talent of doing tongue twisters ain't looking so good here, but she's still a voice actor and she has other talents, one of which is improv. It seems that in every episode, Ayasaki would be given a random object from a listener and would have to come up with a voice and story for that object. The example from Broadcast 1 is... a stapler? So, uh, Ayasaki pretends to be a stapler for a bit? In Broadcast 5, she becomes a horse stuck on a merry-go-round, and this one's a little more interesting as she has a bit of an existential crisis around being stuck on the same loop forever when she just wants to be free. She does her best to express the frustration a merry-go-round horse might feel. The final part of this digest broadcast is an introduction to the next part of Ayasaki's adventure, and the conclusion of Season 1, which lasted 10 episodes. The real Barbara appears and talks about how Ayasaki Yu has gotten very popular, and how they're going to exploit that to make more money. The plan? To have Ayasaki debut as a singer, and will she write her own music? Absolutely not, and neither will Barbara. In fact, this is where the ARG jumps back in, as it will be the fans who write a song for Ayasaki to sing, using the game's built-in music creator. This contest ran from April 24th to May 18th, 2014, and the winner was a song called You Can Do It. The song would go on to debut in the final broadcast of Season 1, and then was subsequently uploaded to the YouTube channel for All Night Sip On. This was, of course, done with the Vocaloid software, and so Barbara announces that Ayasaki will be recording a professionally made, non-Vocaloid, version of the track that they will sell as a CD. Ayasaki is, understandably, thrilled about this, until she realises that the only recording studio Barbara has managed to secure is based in New York, and she needs to go there ASAP. And they can't afford to have her go by plane, and it's impossible to go by train or car, so Ayasaki is going to have to go by boat and bike instead. Robo and pedal bike, specifically. Poor girl. So the show went on hiatus for a year, and also ended season one of Ayasaki's adventure. At this point, the story was still very much contained to the video game, running throughout the first half of 2014. In lore at this point, Ayasaki is 18 years old, having the show pass over her birthday, which is March 21st. A lot of responsibility placed on an 18 year old. The next year is fairly uneventful. I think focus was probably put more on trying to make Banpra P a success, due to his initial struggles at launch. I don't think it's a coincidence that the much cheaper debut version of this game would come out around the same time that Ayasaki returned from America. 
Season 1.5 of the show was called I'm Back, Ayasaki Yu's All Night Sapon, and ran for five broadcasts until it was pointed out by Barbara Robo number six that the title of the show was redundant as Ayasaki Yu had been back for about three months at this point. So instead we got the official start of season two, from broadcast 16 onwards, and this season would continue uninterrupted until the 22nd of April 2017, with some caveats. It's worth mentioning that it is during this period that Ayasaki Yu made her Twitter debut. Ayasaki mentioned on the fourth broadcast of I'm Back that she was interested in trying out Twitter, and then a couple of weeks later in September 2015, the Yu Ayasaki Twitter account was made. On her Twitter, Ayasaki announced new episodes, interacted with fans, celebrities, and other guests on the show, as well as just casually treating it like a personal account. Ayasaki would go on walks and post pictures from those walks, she'd show off new music CDs that she purchased and gush about upcoming songs, and anything that she enjoys. It's genuinely just her Twitter account, and not a brand account for the show, especially as those had their own accounts, both All Night Support and Daigasso Band Brothers. Her Twitter account also posted a four panel webcomic that showed the behind the scenes of All Night Sapon, often detailing something about Ayasaki's life, or her having to deal with whatever scheme Barbara throws at her. For example, when her debut CD had finally been printed, Ayasaki is thrilled, until Barbara reveals the CDs don't have any cover art and so poor Ayasaki has to single handedly draw on the cover art for each CD. Poor, poor girl. By the way, this is what she drew. This is actually the first copy of the official CD released, and only 100 copies of it exist. The hand-baked CDs were sold at the Bampra P event, The Biggest Off Party in History Volume 7, and all copies were sold out. To celebrate this, All Night Supon announced on its June 22nd, 2016 episode that a second single would be released, titled Song For You, and the two songs would be sold as a single CD later that year. However, sales of the debut CD needed to be higher, or at least more than 100. Ayasaki also needed to have more global appeal, and Barbara had a wonderful idea to accomplish this. The CD would be sold at the 2016 Rio Summer Olympics and Paralympic Games. Of course, Ayasaki would need to do this herself, and so back onto the rowboat she goes. They literally announced this plan on the 30th episode of the show, a day after the Olympics had started, so Ayasaki really had to hustle for this one. Unlike the first time Ayasaki was unfairly sent across the world, this time the show wouldn't end. Instead, Ayasaki would be temporarily replaced by two members of the Japanese idol band Iris, for a special show called Gambare Ayasaki Yu All Night Sapon. Her replacements were Azuki Shibuya and Yu Serizawa, both of whom had previously appeared on All Night Sapon for interviews with Ayasaki. This ran for eight broadcasts, and it was also during this time that the official CD debuting song for Yu launched. Its launch event was held on September 25th, 2016 at the Nippon Broadcasting Systems Imagine Studio, and was also hosted by the Iris Duo. Okay, so I'm sorry for breaking reality for this, but let's break down this illusion and talk about who Ayasaki Yu actually is. Not within the lore of this ARG Nintendo setup, no, but who the voice of Ayasaki Yu is, because obviously, to keep this ongoing illusion, she is credited as herself in Banpra P, and any other appearances outside of this game, she is either uncredited, or once again, just Ayasaki Yu. Nintendo has never officially revealed who the voice actor for Ayasaki Yu is, but I think it's pretty easy to figure out by following the story. Ayasaki Yu didn't really go to Brazil, she just temporarily dropped her character because they had planned for this live event that Ayasaki couldn't possibly attend. At least, as Ayasaki. But under her real name, Serizawa Yu, she could. I think looking at all the evidence, it's pretty obvious that Serizawa Yu, or Yu Chan as she's nicknamed, is the voice of Ayasaki Yu. And it's not just because they have the same first name, although I wouldn't be surprised if that was done on purpose. Yu Chan is also a voice actor, and only two years older than Ayasaki. She debuted in the same year that Bambra P launched, and has gone on to star in the likes of Black Clover, Kakiguri, Parasite, and more. She even returned to Nintendo with Dragalia Lost for the character of Chao Li. 
Yu Chan can obviously sing as well, and actually sang both of Ayasaki Yu's songs at the CD event on behalf of Ayasaki, who was still in Brazil at this point, and only appeared briefly over the phone in a presumably pre-recorded message. So the fact that they got Yu Chan to cover for her is a big piece of evidence, but more damning in my opinion is that at this very event, her co-host Azuki Shibuya said, as a joke, that both Yu's sound very alike. I mean, come on, you don't make a joke like that unless it's a tongue-in-cheek reference. There's also the recurring interactions that happen between both Yu's. They follow each other on social media and interact with one another. In fact, the official Ayasaki Yu account frequently tweeted about Iris, and the official Iris account frequently tweeted about Bampra P, at least during this period. And actually, something I discovered during editing is that there was a festival going on where Ayasaki Yu bought a demon mask and a bag of sweets, and coincidentally, Serizawa Yu bought that exact same demon mask and that exact same bag of sweets. They tweeted out both accounts, and Ayasaki Yu retweeted the Serizawa Yu one, and these were like within an hour of each other. I mean, that's a pretty big coincidence if they're not the same person. I mentioned before that Ayasaki Yu had made a guest appearance on two other radio shows, All Night Nippon and Angela's Spark in Talking Show, and coincidentally, this was just after Yu Chan had appeared herself in the very same episodes. And finally, Yu Serizawa had her own birthday live stream in December 2016, and on this live stream, she covered the Ayasaki Yu song, Song for You and promotional leaflets for Ayasaki CD, which is available to purchase on Amazon Japan at this point, were distributed at the event. In fact, thanks to my good friend Push Dustin, I actually managed to get one of these CDs. This is the blue one. They actually came in three flavors, blue, green, and pink, although every CD had the same music on it. It's just that the cover art was different, as was the art on the CD as well. Yeah, the CDs are really nice. Uh, they come with both of the Yu Serizawa songs that she sung for Ayasaki Yu. I mean, so Ayasaki's two songs that she sung, as well as like the three interludes, an intro, an outro, and a intro, um, just explaining what the music is. It's really the only way to get a high quality version of Ayasaki Yu's songs, because they're not on YouTube. They are on Nico Nico, but the quality isn't the best. But yeah, it's just it's just a really cool CD, and I wanted to show it off. So yeah, Ayasaki Yu is actually Japanese idol Sarah Zawa Yu, who's actually still releasing music, and released a couple of good songs recently. I would recommend checking them out. But before you do that, let's wrap up Ayasaki Yu's story first. So, Ayasaki would return from Brazil on October 8th, 2016, with the 31st broadcast of All Night Suppon, and from here on out, the episodes would be pretty standard, except for the 38th broadcast, which he actually co-hosted with Iris's Serizawa Yu. Hmm. But let's turn the clock back, because we've talked about Ayasaki Yu as a singer, but she wanted to be a voice actor, so what happened there, if anything? Well, after she returned from New York previously, Ayasaki began mentioning that she had been auditioning for roles as a voice actor, but hadn't actually been hired by anyone yet. She did manage to secure a narration role on All Night Nippon, but this was just to advertise Bampra P on one episode of the show. But not all would be lost for Ayasaki. While it may not have been anime like she hoped, she did get to make her video game debut doing voice acting for Nintendo's big Wii U title, Super Mario Maker. In this title, Ayasaki played the game's host, Mashiko, or Mario in the US, and let's give it a listen. Mm, this doesn't seem right. Ah, I see. So Mashiko had this weird Animal Crossing-esque voice when the game first began, but on March 9th, 2016, the Mashiko Mystery Mushroom made its debut, and that is when Ayasaki Yu made her debut. She gave this character a voice. Also then, two weeks later on her 20th birthday, Ayasaki Yu would debut herself and play herself in the game as a special collaboration with All Night Suppon. This was her only appearance outside of Japan, and the only time us Western gamers got a glimpse of her. 
I still remember when she was announced and we all gave a collective who? It was my first time hearing about her and I remember trying to find her origin back then. Little did I know how deep this rabbit hole would go. Unfortunately for Ayasagi, this would be her only voice acting role. And she's not even credited because her appearance was in a free update. We only know about this because the official Japanese Twitter account for Super Mario Maker tweeted it out that the fact that she was the voice actor for Mashiko. Man, talk about having it rough. But there is a reason this was her only voice acting role. And with that, let's finish this ARG once and for all. Ayasaki Yu's CD was a success, but it needed to reach a wider audience, and clearly, going to both North and South America just wasn't enough. Barbara wanted to reach for the moon. Literally. On the 48th and final episode of All Night Suppon, released on April 22nd, 2017, Barbara ordered a rabbit living on the moon to begin selling CDs out in space in order to gather even more attention. Earth alone just wasn't enough. And of course, Ayasaki Yu, our favourite courier, would need to deliver those CDs personally. And so, Barbara Robo number 6 was remodelled into a rocket ship, and Ayasaki was sent to the moon, and has yet to return. I guess she's just... Chilling up there with Mega Man Volnut? All Night Suppon was at this point suspended until her return, which obviously never happened, and thus the story came to its close. So every time you look up on the moon, just remember that there is a radio host and a rabbit desperately trying to sell CDs to space aliens, unaware of their own show's demise. Maybe that's what the weird moon cube they recently discovered actually is. Hmm. So that was Ayasaki Yu and the story of All Night Suppon, but there are a few other things to mention. Obviously, the blog for All Night Suppon continued until summer 2017 with the Twin Hades game contest on the way, and Ayasaki Yu actually had a Nintendo 3DS theme launched in Japan. It went live the day of the final broadcast and was available to purchase for two years before unfortunately being delisted, probably because it played You Can Do It, which may not be fully owned by Nintendo. Ayasaki Yu's social also stopped the day before the final broadcast, her final tweets all being around preparing for the 48th broadcast and also advertising the final official fan meeting that was happening the same day, where Ayasaki merchandise was being sold. I didn't know where to mention this previously, but merchandise for Ayasaki was made and sold at both the 8th and final official fan meetups. These were sold in extremely limited quantities, I'm talking 140 and 35 respectively. The first two of these products were food, a snack bar and marshmallows with the UIasaki branding on it, and then the final product was a lanyard and badges with Ayasaki drawn on it. Speaking of badges, Ayasaki U also appeared in the Japanese version of the Nintendo Badge Arcade on 3DS. There was a Bambra P collaboration on April Fool's Day 2015, which reappeared in 2016 before permanently being added in August of that same year. These badges reference both the official art and artwork from the webcomics, in addition to her Mario Maker sprite. We even get to see young Ayasaki and Ayasaki in her rowboat. Gambare Ayasaki-chan! As Nintendo Badge Arcade is still live, these badges should still be obtainable, which is more than I can say for All Night Suppon itself. And it's time to get negative. Even after Ayasaki was blasted off into space, reruns of the show were still being played, and fans could buy the seasons as episodes to keep permanently and listen to when they want, but these episodes were obviously locked to the 3DS, and as far as I can find, no one has uploaded them to the internet. We've had the occasional screenshot, but the closest thing we have is that debut episode All Night Suppon uploaded itself. And this is a problem, because Bambra P, it just doesn't exist anymore. It was clear to everyone who played this game that All Night Suppon would be ending, because on March 21st, 2017, a month before the show's finale, Nintendo stopped accepting fan-made songs to be uploaded to the All Night Suppon website and YouTube channel. Then 10 days later, it just stopped releasing new songs to download as well. It makes sense, March 2017 was the launch of the Nintendo Switch, and while the 3DS was still getting games, 
it was clear that it was time for both Nintendo and Intelligent Systems who made this game to move on. It was still available to play, and fans could still listen to the radio or purchase songs, there just wouldn't be any new updates. But even that came to an end. On the 20th of December 2019, Nintendo stopped allowing for the purchase of tomatoes and the cheaper debut version of the game was delisted from the eShop. And then, in May 2020, three years after Ayasaki went into space, the ability to download songs and listen to the online radio shows came to an end. This of course meant that All Night Suppon finally saw the dawn break and is no longer accessible in any form. Nintendo even took down the All Nights Upon website which hosted many of the fan created works, many of which won't have been fully preserved. And that's the real tragedy here. Mountains of content, made both by Nintendo, its partners and fans, have just been lost to the ether and almost no one knows. Thankfully because of YouTube, Twitter and the Wayback Machine, some of this stuff has been archived. I have no idea if every fan work submitted to Nintendo was uploaded to the YouTube, but clearly a lot of them were, and I was still able to access some remixes from the All Night Supon website. So it's really just the official content made by Nintendo that is lost to us, the actual broadcasts of All Night Supon. I have no idea if this video, I, I mean radio broadcast, will reach anyone living in Japan who was active with this game. But if you were and you actually have these episodes saved, I implore you to get them online, even if it's just a recording on your phone. These weren't just light broadcasts after all, a lot of these episodes were interviews with Japanese musicians, and I'm sure there's probably some really interesting stuff in there. Luckily, there is footage of the final ever episode on YouTube, uploaded by a fan, and you saw footage of it throughout this broadcast. But, as this episode existed to be a farewell to the series, it does not contain any interviews. It's all just story content and one final performance of You Can Do It. I tried to play Bampra P when making this broadcast to get some footage and test out its features, but I couldn't get access. When you boot up the game, the tutorial is available, but once you make an account and start the game up for real, it just never starts. I don't know if this is because I'm starting it from scratch, and if you already had an account it works fine, or if because the service is completely gone now, it's just inaccessible for everyone. Either way, it's a real shame. Editing Josh here. During the production of this video, I found out that the always lovely Nintendan actually owns a copy of the game and tested this out for me. You can still play the game, it turns out, but you can't access any of the online features. You have to skip the setup phase of the tutorial to get in though. However, as the digest and light version of the game didn't come with any music pre-installed, those versions are just useless now, even if you manage to somehow download them. I am curious as to whether or not we will see a Switch game in the Digasso Brand Brothers series. The game relied on having both screens, so probably not, but then the Switch does have a touchscreen, which is the more important aspect, so it could work. Then again, this late in the console's life cycle, I can't imagine a new one would have a long shelf life. Maybe as an early title for the Switch's successor? Who knows if that will happen, and who knows if we'll ever get to see Ayasaki Yu again. At the very least, I can let you all hear her voice as we close out this episode. So thank you for listening to All Night Chronicles. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, take it away, Ayasaki Yu. Shinjitsu